Hi, good morning ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Suzuki GSX-8S, the replacement for the GSX-S750, which you may remember I had and adored. So uh, what's the difference? Well, slightly bigger engine, it's called an 8, it's not quite an 8, it's uh, prone to do, you know, the 1000 isn't 1000, it's 999, this is 78 something to be confirmed and if you remember the 750 was an inline 4 now as you can probably hear this isn't it's a parallel twin the GSX-S 750 kicked out over 100 brake horsepower this is 82. Now, of uh, reviews I've watched say that that's enough. Let's see, shall we? And the other thing about the GSX-S 750 was that on the motorway, even you did not need a visor because it was so streamlined. Well, it's a windy now. day, so we're going to get a bit of wind on the camera. I'm hoping that crackle's gone away, I've had a fiddle. But now we're opening up to the national speed limit or thereabouts. Let's see what, uh, well do you know what? I know there's a massive hedgerow there but I think they've nailed it. I can feel the wind on my chest, it's not intrusive. It's a lovely riding position, the handlebars are in a real nice position, not quite as straight as the, the old 750, they're a little bit tapered. Whether they've used a fat bar or not, it's that kind of, that kind of look. Crying out for bar end mirrors I would say. Well look, I'm 5 foot 11, I know I'm having to shout because it's windy at the end of the day, it's a windy day. I'm 5 foot 11 just and an average build, I weigh about 13 stone, I've got a 31 in seam which means that you know both feet are absolutely planted on the ground when I stop without any problem at all, my knees are bent. But from my point of view I don't need to put a screen on it and looking at what's available, I think that's a blessing. But this is a naked, it's not designed, you, you can buy uh, a, a rack and, and panniers, uh, but it's not designed for motorway riding, it's not a touring bike, it's a naked bike, it's supposed to be buzzed around the country lanes, so Let's get off. Let's get off this 70 mile an hour road onto a localised national speed limit road where there's less wind noise, less electric cars that think they're better than everyone driving up your backside and let's see what we've got. Rather disappointing to find that they've changed the speed limit along here to 50. Okay, so this is a road, but it's so little use. I'm going to just use it to pull over in 
So, look at the screen. Now, if we push the up button and hold it, it takes us into this menu. And then we can use the mode button to select, and we can select quick shifter, uh, you can set revs, uh, you can set go into your settings and set your night and day mode just so you can see that's the day mode not a fan personally so I'll go back to black if you set it auto it'll automatically go to night mode the black at night time um, it'll automatically go to white in the daytime so we'll just come out of that Info is basically your servicing information. Nothing fascinating. So close. We've got a nice screen there. Traction control, power modes. You go. That one. So then you can go through your settings. So you can flick this around in the bends like no one's business. It's quite agile got to be a little bit careful at the moment especially around these rural parts the amount of mud that there is on the road so we are taking it into its 82 brake horsepower up to the 10,000 rpm now I'm getting quite a lot of wind here quite a lot of mud on the road here as well so we're going to ease it off mm, appears to be just that feel so okay so it's the beautiful Yorkshire Wolds over there oh, we're in them just around the corner the trouble is you just got to always be careful for what's coming up the hill and might be on your side of the road. They're not open bends. You use that quick shifter, drop it down, I can see that there's nothing coming. And we'll sling it around that bend there. Tuck into the near side. And take a nice straight line on this bend. Going down the hill and break in for the 30 of North Newbold. So here it is, the rather aggressive front end that this new generation of naked bike from Suzuki has. The Suzuki GSX 8S. So they've done away with GSX 750, replaced it with the GSX 8S. Bit of a mouthful. The company de described the front end as ready for action. I think it looks very aggressive. It's certainly quite waspy. You can imagine the pincers, sharp nose, ready to deliver some some aggression. It's fitted with Dunlop Sport Max 2 tires. They're new, designed with Suzuki for the bike. They certainly don't disappoint. They've gone for a, a sort of slim line look, uh, stripped down with the tubes exposed. Love it or hate it, I guess, but there's not a lot to hate apart from that hideous tailpiece, which looks so long and really ruins the smooth lines of this new design of bike. 
Tail tidy coming up for anyone that buys one. Lightweight wheels. This blue is rather pretty, I think. It's one of the best colours on bike I've seen in a long time. Very, very keen on the colour. So, Suzuki say it has a longer wheelbase than your average naked sports bike. And, but the smaller front and rear dimensions mean that uh, it has greater stability and the rider can move forwards on the seat to give them greater control in bends or tight bends. Your typical Euro 5 enormous catalytic converter there, but a really nice compact standard pipe. And as I've said, with the parallel twin they make a, a nice noise so you don't really need to, to change. And the design of that tucked away underneath out the way doesn't really need any aesthetic design either so you've got your single disc Nissan caliper brakes on the back and your twins on the front just your drilled brakes usual no no wavy discs uh, Nissan caliper again the tyres are your standard tyre that you would expect size wise but for some reason they don't look it. That is a 180 on the back. It does not look fat enough to be a 180 but it is. Unfortunately the roads are filthy hence the amount of grime that there is on the bike so apologies for that. There you go it is a nice looking machine. Apart from the wing mirrors, I'm not a fan of the wing mirrors. Very tricky to adjust, very fiddly. And I find them that they just sort of bounce back to the position they want to be in rather than the position they need now, to be in. The screen, and we've gone through some of the things on the main video. It's a 5 inch TFT dash. Uh, it maintains the simplicity that Suzuki uh, are loved for. Simple switch, rocker switch, mode button, indicator horn, flasher. In the event that you pay the 300 and something quid extra for the heated grips, the switch is there. You haven't got uh, preload uh, or any other suspension modifications. Suzuki say they've set it up for all rider styles to suit a range of styles. The bike's only kicking out 82 brake horsepower, but it's very torquey, so you've got plenty of get up and go. Uh, so far, we've run it in rain mode, and even that was very, very exciting. The rain mode, rain mode, mode C. B is your sort of standard road, and A, your sport mode. And we'll try them all as we go on. So, I feel it's a little bit on the Marmite side, but not as much as some. And I think you won't go wrong with the 8,000 or 8,100 price tag. And you don't really need to do a lot to it. Maybe bar end mirrors, obviously that will depend on your taste. It would certainly be one of the first things I would do. And I cannot understand why manufacturers don't put more protection on these bikes. Everyone knows a radiator on naked bikes is exposed, so why not just put a cover on it? They cost pence. Then, sump guard. Again, some bikes come with them as standard for a similar price. It would make the bike more competitive to just put this on as standard. Some engine protectors some sliders possibly. There's a few things that I don't like as I've already said about the mirrors uh, the side stand's really flimsy. I, I don't know I'm only about 13 and a half stone I'm not a, a fat knacker and it, it just seemed to flex too much when I was getting on and off and this bike will probably have spent quite a lot of time outside but it's only done 600 and something miles and there
is rust, which is not what you want to see on a bike of this age. Bi-directional quick shifter, it's very slick up, not quite so slick down, but better than the 2021 Tracer GT that I had before, which, you know, significantly more expensive. Anyway, we're not here to talk all day about the bike, we're here to ride it. So, let's take on some country lanes and try out power band mode A. It says in the Suzuki description, it's a super torquey engine. So we're in second gear. This is a reasonably steep hill. Let's see what we can do. Well, that's power mode B. And I think you'll agree that that is pretty impressive. It's not all about the brake horsepower, is it? It's about the handling, it's about the fun factor. So it might not roll on as fast as uh, a 1000cc bike that's 150 brake horsepower, but it's comfortable, it's dynamic, it handles well. It delivers what a naked sports bike should do, the fun factor. I'm going to see by rolling off if I can change the modes, I can. So there we go, we're into mode A, we'll leave it in traction control, no we won't, we'll... We'll use the straight stretch back up to High Hunsley just to do a bit of a test to see if there is much difference between B and easily achieve significantly more than the speed limit there's enough there's enough get up and go to make it fun and safe and it's really comfortable as well I mean yeah I know I've had some brakes but bum comfort's great my arms are Fine. My arms are very relaxed and comfortable. I'm sitting upright. I could lean forwards a little bit, but to be honest with you, that's making the wind and the buffeting worse. So I'll sit up there, I'll have to push it the wind there, that's not a problem. It's not tiring. It's when it's hitting you in the face and pushing your head back and you're straining your neck. That's when it's a problem. Suzuki described the 130mm travel. KYB inverted forks as plush. Well, I'm not going to argue because it's a very comfortable ride. Plush is maybe not quite the right word because you know, sort of a sort of put plush with a nice sumptuous leather sofa, don't you? ride over bumps is not too bad at all but then when you want to be aggressive you can be still for under nine grand or under eight and a half grand you're probably going to get yourself a proper little fun machine which you could ride around on I'm not going to say all day because I've not gone far and I've had significant break while I've been waffling into the, my other cameras but I feel as though I could ride this for a while one thing with parallel twins is you often find they're quite buzzy quite vibey through the bars this 
isn't. I haven't had a hint of pins and needles, which is rather good. I doubt the top end of this bike is capable of giving you bragging rights, but the fun factor gives it the same rating for a bike as I would give the MX-5 for a car. You don't need a high top end, you can't do it. But you do need to have safe acceleration that gives you the ability to overtake slow moving traffic. Get out of the danger zone as quickly as possible and so get in a back village. in. And then great deal different from a town, 30 miles an hour speed limit. Hope to God we don't go like Wales and become a 20 mile an hour speed limit everywhere, otherwise it'll take us forever to get anywhere. Well that dog either doesn't approve or was like, cool look at that! So last and by no means least, let's deal with the suburban and urban jungle. Some crazy city driving. God, cyclists. Don't look. It's fine. Oh, do that. Okay. Breaking my own rules, but I'm bored. Cross, couldn't you? But no. Ooh, cobbles. We don't like cobbles. <laughs> and that's why we don't like cobbles. However, I feel the Suzuki handled them admirably. Can we go down here? That car just went down there. See exactly where it's closed. So we're saying this can't go the way I want it to go yet. That's typical. So we've got more cobbles. I would like to talk to you, but I'm going to sound like a Dalek while I'm doing down here going bumpity 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 bump. You're getting to see a bit of hole you wouldn't normally see on one of my reviews. Quite an interesting bit actually, an old unspoiled bit, where they filmed Enola Homes on these roads. So, in the presence of Sir William de la Pole, the first ever Mayor of Hull, let's sum up a review of this grand offering from Suzuki GXX8S. So, just short of 800 cc's, just over 8,000 pounds, just over 80 brake horsepower, all the eights. Very torquey bike, exciting to ride on all kinds of roads. Stable, smooth, poised, balanced. There's very little negative to say about it. We buy a bike to ride and guarantee that you will enjoy the ride on this bike. Of course there's a few niggly little things but they're minor, extremely minor, tail tidy, needed desperately. Mirrors, awful. They're big enough but the adjustment's terrible and they feel flimsy. And there is that little patch of rust on the brake lever. Now that might just be a, a one-off. However, it's fitted with excellent tyres, it's got sharp looks and so it's fitting that it's in the presence of the deep aquarium in Hull, a building that challenged the imagination of many people when it was first constructed. So it's fitting that we now sum up and say thank you to Suzuki first of all for creating this little monster 
and to Five Ways Motorcycle Centre in Hull for loaning me it to review. Five Ways is the only dealership in the area to offer Kawasaki, Suzuki and Yamaha, as well as Peugeot scooters, as well as a huge range of clothing, parts and accessories. So yes, would I buy one? In a heartbeat. You can say is if you have just over £8,000 to spare and you want a middleweight naked bike, this is certainly top of the consideration list. It's a great replacement for the previous model of 750 and I've certainly been won over by the parallel twin. Sounds amazing. Talky as hell. And very, very exciting. summed up this bike but you really could not go wrong with a purchase of this okay you're not going to go touring on it and you're not going to win the TT's on it and you're not going to ride it across a field but day-to-day -day commuting or Sunday blast out into the countryside riding unbeatable absolutely unbeatable